Right, and let's jump into this in five, four, three, two, one. Hi guys, and welcome to Geek Talk, where we talk deep and geek about pianos, keyboards, synthesizers, and music production. And today, once again, my special guest, Gary Newman, and his producer, Aid Fenter. Aid Fenton. Gary, Aid, how are you, gents? All right, thank you. Good, thank you, mate. Um, yeah, I mean, I know we've been allocated an hour today, but time does fly when you're having fun. So, right, let's jump into the straightaway intruder. Out on the 21st of May, we've heard four singles. And, you know, I was a bit nervous for you, Gary, <laughs> only because I said when you, re when you released Savage, you know, the bar was raised so high. I was thinking, OK, <laughs> it's a bit like when Depeche Mode released Songs of Faith and Devotion. You know, it's everything's downhill from you. But <laughs> the first four songs I've heard from there have been absolutely mind blowing. So, Aid, this is your fifth record you're doing with Gary. Mm -hmm. um, you st your first one, I believe, was was Jagged. Yeah. And um, yeah, man, how, how are you feeling so far? Gary, we'll start with you. Are you nervous? Or what, what are your emotions about this? I was, when we first started to make it, I was really concerned about trying to live up to Savage. Um, and then it kind of just sort of faded away, really. I mean, I, I don't, when I'm making the albums, I, I'm not overly confident about them at any time. You know, it's always a little bit of a, of a of a journey and when they're finished but i don't i don't listen to it for a good month or two once it's been mastered you know and you can't do anything more to add to it to tweak mm. it I, i'm really nervous then because that's when you're going to hear all the mistakes you know all the things that you should have done because now you can't do anything about it and that's, sort of that's the that's the period that i hate because because you go quiet <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the bit where i start getting nervous and start thinking Oh my God, does he hate it? But um, actually, after a couple of months, he sent me an email saying, I've just, been, I've got through that phase now yeah. and I love it. So that was all right again. There is a certain gestation period when you're working on a record, you get to a point where you're so close to it, you lose perspective. Yeah. And it's only after coming back to it after, because you, you do, you need other people involved. But Aid, let's talk about some of the production on this now. Um, Gary, your sound, you have really sort of, committed to a particular sound, especially from two, you know, you kind of hit the nail on the head when you, you did Pure, you know, from that period, you've really been locked into your style. But within that, every album has had its own sonic character. And that's what I want to talk about on this record, Aid. Um, if I listen to the songs like um, Saints and Liars, um, Intruder, Now and Forever, they I mean, they, they are 100% Gary Newman, but they don't sound like the songs from the previous record. So was there a conscious effort to make it sonically different some way? Um, on, on my part, definitely, yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't say that probably with the four songs, maybe apart from I Am Screaming, that have been released so far um, by BMG, I, would, I wouldn't say that, you know, I would probably say that only I Am Screaming gives you a taster of how the sounds developed you know obviously with Gorkham Sen being involved with Elizabeth Gazeltwin being involved on Saints and Liars um, that's kind of taking it to a different space I think um, and when people hear songs like The Gift I mean you know that that's when it, it's really obvious how different this album is to Savage you know um, so you know it's a Gary Newman album of course it, it, it it's still identifiable as that but we've added different layers now and I think and that was always a deliberate thing certainly on my part to keep it sounding like a Gary Newman album obviously um and and have all of those characteristics but to add those layers you know for me moves it on to the next level I, I think when when Savage was done and all the touring was you know complete I deliberately didn't get into anything new then. I wanted to have a complete break from Savage mm. so that any ideas that you still had lingering, things that you hadn't got around to recording for Savage, I didn't want any of that there. So that by the time I started to work on Intruder and write Intruder, Savage was long gone. And I'd heard other things then. You know, I'd, I'd, new albums had come out. I'd seen TV shows with great scores on them and 
been to the cinema, read books, you know, all of that, that new. Do you know what? I, I think I think creative people, I've said this lots of times, but you know, we're very sort of sponge like. Things are coming in. Mm. You're just absorbing stuff all the time. You don't even realize <clears> it, but it's all going in. So the more you can expose yourself, but, and it's not just music. In fact, it rarely is music. Inspiration comes from everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Conversations, you know, <laughs> standing in goose shit this morning. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Anywhere, yeah, yeah, it's all, it's all did going you get in. From that, then? And they went. Well, I know we have to see. It's still, <laughs> on still next, fresh. On the next one. <laughs> <laughs> and at some point, you know, when you're going to start a new record, mm. you kind of squeeze that sponge, mm. and all that stuff comes out. So I wanted to make sure there was nothing of Savage still in it. You said, by the time I squeezed that and started on new stuff, it was fresh, new, new ideas, new ways of thinking about things. Um, but you, you, I've got the same voice. I've got the same limitations as a, as a very, very poor keeper player. So <laughs> you're working within, within that all the time and you're trying to make sure that you're not repeating yourself and it is moving forward as much as you can, but within those limitations, you know, as soon as I start singing and it sounds like me. Mm -hmm. So aid's job to try to make the album sound significantly different or no, no, significantly, but just different to the one before is a, is quite difficult, I think, because you know there's the voice, yeah, and it, I start singing, boom, Gary Newman again. So you yeah. know, it takes some skill to be able to shape a new palette of sounds around that, a new vocabulary, if you like, around that, um, to, to to make it feel different. Well, you know, um, I've said this to Aid last time, Gary, when we spoke, I've been using Savage as a masterclass for some of my students when I'm coaching them. Uh, and I, I don't want to get too geeky now, but I'm just fascinated by that record, by the amount of bottom end that is in that. Now, to the viewers watching here, obviously, when you listen to rock music or hip hop, if you listen to a rock music record, it has energy and definition, but it doesn't have that sort of deep, put a put a hip hop record on after a rock record and you'll hear it doesn't move the, the speaker cone that much. And that's because of, because of physics, there is a certain amount of space within a frequency spectrum. I'm getting really geeky here, but hear me out. And what blows me about, blows my mind about this record is when I put this on, I said, it's got the, it's got the, it's got the energy of a rock record or an industrial, but it has got the bottom end of a hip hop record. It's like the perfect hybrid. And I was like, how are you doing this, Aid? Well, I, Nathan Body, it, it takes uh, a lot of credit for that, actually. I mean, Gary, you know, when Gary sends me a chorus, you know, it's, it's, all, it's always very weighty, you know, and we try yeah. and keep that. However, when, you need weight with clarity, though. Yeah, exactly. However, I, I have no clarity in the stuff I send him. <laughs> well, you've got a lot of parts in your your your, your stuff's a very wall of sound, Gary. So it's, I, I should think, aid correct me. It's very difficult to mix because of all that. Well, that's why I don't mix it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I you know I, Cut. <laughs> yeah. I I oversee the process of mixing it with with Nathan, but you know Nathan um, Nathan's kind of become this superstar mixing engineer since we sort of knew him 50, you know however long ago when jagged came out actually mm -hmm. um and um you know he, he because he mixes a lot of hip-hop records oh yeah um his ability i'll, I'll send something to him uh, or and to gary and i'll think oh my god you know the room's shaking this is fucking incredible you know he's so loud and then nathan will send his mix back and it's about twice as loud and twice as much bass in it. And I, I don't, I don't know, even in, I, I'm a geek and I don't know how, how he's done yeah. it, but. And then we take it to mastering. And then you take it to mastering and then it gets louder and yeah. bassier yeah. again. We get, get to mastering and you walk in there and you think you're not going to need to touch this. This is absolutely <laughs> as good as it can be. Yeah. You know, I dare you go on, make that sound better. Yeah. And he goes <laughs> better. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, so how, how does he go? Progress, it gets <laughs> exactly that. Brilliant. Um, okay, I just want to talk a bit about gear because uh, Geek Talk is focused on gear. Um, what's interesting is, Aid, and I want to point this out for, for the geeks and even people who are not geeks, is that in this record, Aid, you've used the CR78 drum machine. And the challenge in using a 70, uh, CR78 drum machine to try and make it sound modern, but also the historic significance of when last was Gary's voice heard alongside a CR78. He's, he's, he's seething now. But, but he's, he's seething. But, uh, you see, <laughs> I got hold of one. Um 
a couple of years ago, just beaten up old thing, you know, absolutely beaten up old thing. And and Gary was sending, it was I Am Screaming actually, which was the song that he sent, which was one of the earlier songs, I think. Um, and it had this fantastic sort of... Um, CR78 sounding... Did, no, 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 it didn't. It didn't at the time <laughs> at all. But um, I sort of thought, well how can they get away with using it which i love the sound of a cr78 cr78 lock on on dance or whatever you know i think it's amazing but to use it in 2021 you know it's mm. gonna how can you how can you use it without it sounding like a pastiche mm. version of a gary newman song you know yeah um so just by using some um distortion and some tape saturation on it adding a, a loads of reverb it just and of course layering it with other more kind of industrial sounds it, it just sort of it melts into the background but it it does identify it as like whoa this is a Gary Newman song with a CR78 again but it doesn't sound like anything else he's done before you know and, and I think that's always the the challenge you know there are other sounds on what the challenge is the challenge, challenge is getting it past him yeah <laughs> <laughs> trying to sneak in that old shit and I, I don't notice it. That's but his you, challenge. The thing is, though, you did notice it because Gemma told yeah, me like you did it. notice it. <laughs> and, you know, but, you know, it's not just that. It's, you know, the, um, you know, the string sound, which I've actually used less on this record, but, um, you know, that the the identity of a, of a you know, of a, of a Gary Newman chorus, the power that's created yeah. by his vocal and and then to have the strings sat behind it, or the you know the phaser sort of sound from, mm. you know the early um, polymoog or whatever, you know, to, as long as it's not, as long as you're not trying to use it in the same way that it was used on cars or whatever. This, mm. I don't see a problem with using it on like it's used once in the gift, for example, in two sections of the mm. gift that last about ten seconds. But I know that people have picked. Uh, sorry, not on the gift on uh, now and forever, but. Mm. I noticed that people have really picked up on it uh, as being, it still sounds modern and that is a real challenge. That is really quite a difficult thing to do, you know, but uh, I would never, I would never ever want it to be like a tribute to Gary Newman's yeah. album. You know, yeah, well, that, I, th that I think that that's, that's great. Music. And you've you have you have you've, you've taken something and what the, the clever thing about that is you're nodding you're, you're you're making a nod to something in the past but you're doing it in a stylish modern way so that it's not retro or nostalgic if you know what I mean. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, anybody, you know, if if you were listening to listen to the new Nine Inch Nails record and you know it had a similar sound in it to Closer or something, you'd go, oh my god, that sounds like Closer. I fucking love that, mm. you know. But what's why why is that a problem? You know, you you. It, that's that's not what you do as, as a fan you go wow I, I love the sound of that it sounds a little bit like closer i really like that or mm. yeah you know that, that's the similar kind of identity thing mm. you know but we we as a pair of we're always trying to you know we, that that's just a that's a tiny part of of everything it, the, all of the other sounds that come with it you know we're trying to make those as fresh as possible all the time you know i'm not aware of signature sounds that's that's the other part of this mm. you know if somebody was to say you know do that typical newman thing i would never clue what that was because i'm too close uh, to you, it you, yeah you say that but you like on it like for example the intruder demo that you sent me intruder was the first song that we did you know the, the strings on on that they're not mine they're gary's you know that that you know that on the the uh, yeah bridge yeah. section between the verses and the chorus yeah that you know that that's that is a signature gary newman thing i don't need to touch that that's you know that sounds fantastic already so i think you do but you just it's a subconscious thing you know yes yeah, yeah I, mean, I wouldn't be able to to point to something and say no. that's that's my sound. when i was going for atmosphere on 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 intruder i i i, I found bits in it that i hadn't found before there's, there's two newman yeah, um, patches in it. Newman patches. <laughs> yeah, like Gary Newman strings or yeah. something. Well, well like, yeah, I I used those. Like I used those when I interviewed David Brooks, and I, I put together like a. Uh, I made a composition of um, what's it? Um, dude, replicas. Sorry, and I actually found the preset on there, and I wondered if you'd used it. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't. Actually. No, 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 we haven't, because the Axis Forest one is much better. Yeah, yeah. That's well. Better. Listen, this brings us nicely onto the talk of gear. And Gary, this is what I've always loved about you is you're, you're so sort of unassuming. Now, 
I'm not, okay, now I've got to be careful how I'm saying this now. I call it the Forrest Gump syndrome. Now, I'm not saying you're like Forrest Gump, but if you've seen the movie Forrest Gump, you know, he right. does these amazing things and he's always so dismissive of it. They go, oh, I just do. How, how are you doing this, dude? And you're a little bit like that. You do these things and you're kind of like, you're quite dismissive of it. So there's no ego with you, which I love. So I call it the, the Forrest Gump syndrome with respect. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> cut. Uh, what, um, what was interesting, I was watching your, because um, obviously I follow you on Patreon and Gemma was filming you in your studio once. And um, I looked at it and I went, Where's all his gear? Now, you would be a nightmare for, for gear manufacturers when they want you to endorse stuff because I know a lot of people, they've got racks and racks of gear with not a single good idea. You, on the other hand, there's no gear. There's just a computer there. And you're kind of dismissive of the fact. You're basically saying, I'm modern, I'm current. This is the way forward. Anything you want to say about that? I just... I. I like simplicity. Yeah. You know, so I've got I've got um a Raven screen. Yeah. Um, MMZ, whatever it's called. Um with Logic on it. I switched to Logic because I found Pro Tools such a pain to try to keep up to date with and an aid was on Logic. So it made more sense for us both doing the same thing. And he wouldn't change. So <laughs> <laughs> um you know, I, I love the, all the software since it around now. I think they're amazing. Um I just got myself a MIDI controller keyboard that, that controls everything. And that, I mean, and I am not a producer mm. and I am not particularly geeky. My aide makes fun of me all the time because I haven't got a clue about gear and what's going on. I used to try to pretend that I did, but I just accepted defeat eventually. But you produce telecom. Yeah. And dance. Well, yeah. But and the pleasure principle. You see, that's, that's the Forrest Gump thing coming in again, yeah? It's the <laughs> exactly, Forrest Gump yeah. syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not why I call him Forrest, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not. You know, there, there was a point when you know, I had a stack of manuals beside my bed, and that, that was my nighttime reading. So, you know, sexy old me. I'll be reading <laughs> manuals on, <laughs> on gear, wondering why I wasn't getting any sex. <laughs> that was fine. So, and I just thought, you know what? It, this is like a full time job, just trying to keep up with technology. And it was just advancing so rapidly. And I, I decided that, you know, your skills, if you like, your, your strengths are just writing tunes. That's what you do best. You're a performer. So that, You're a performer. That's not, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's not worry about keeping up with the very latest version of virus or whatever, you know, it might be. So, I've got a nice little collection of, of gear. You know, got Omnisphere and all the native instrument stuff. A lot of it sort of, I've been guided towards it by aid. And I've got my little keyboard and I sit there and write tunes. And it is a very, very capable studio. Very. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it, I could I could pretty much make anything I wanted in there if, if I had the skills. Um, I don't need all that. And, and the other thing about it is I'm not nostalgic about gear. You know, I, I've got a mini move and it's in the garage propped up against my canoe. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, I, I don't need to have all that stuff there because it, that will come. Everything I want to do, I can do in the computer with all the software that's in there, and I find that exciting. I feel like I've got the best out of the old sort of legacy gear that I used to use, all, all the sounds that I would want to use from it, because there's plenty of sounds in those things that I wouldn't want to use, but all the ones that I would want to use that I'm really blown away by, I have I've used them, and so I don't have that need to want to go back and keep oh I use that mini moog low growl again or that poly moog strings I, I, I don't have that you know I don't I don't want to use those same sounds again yeah. so why have it in the studio let's just keep moving on I think Gary um and I've used you as a textbook example in you know on my channel when we talk about this kind of stuff because there was an interview once where you were talking about Look, you know, because I I always get caught in these terrible debates about analog versus digital and I think you said it best and I quote I quoted you on this in one of my videos I said Gary Newman said if you are if you are caught up between analog and digital then you're in the wrong game your your job as a producer should be to make the best sound or something like that it's not about the gear it's about the idea if you want to elaborate on that well that's how I feel about it you know, you know to, to listen to people talking about the benefits of analog over digital as though they're the only two choices I think is pretty stupid yeah. it doesn't matter what makes the sound it, it, what matters is the sound itself. Yes. So 
you know, if you're arguing about whether your analog digital synth is best, well, you're missing out. What about that over there? Go and slam that door and record that because that's a great fucking sound. And you're not even going to think about that because you're still getting anal about whether your digital synth is better than your analog synth. Synthesizers are just a small part of what makes music. If you're yeah. talking about sound and noises, you know, the world is full of things that makes sounds, really, really cool noises. The challenge is to capture them and then try to find a way of making them musical. You know, because they're not meant to be, you know, dragging a bit of concrete across a drain hole cover. It's not a musical instrument, but you can make that into something really, really cool. And and that's kind of the the, the, the point of it, I think. Electronic music was meant to be Explore, ex, an exploration of new sounds, of new ways of doing things. So when you hear people talk, talking about analog and digital, you just think you missed the point of this. You missed the point right from the very, very beginning. And um, I find that a bit frustrating, really. And I don't think the music they make is very good either. Well, well there we go. That's great. Uh, as I say, you're not you're not going to get much for soft. You're not going to get much uh, hardware endorsements because uh, you know with that because you know people are going. You know, Gary, could you just have a photo of you next to this modulus synth? You're like, I don't use modulus synth, but this is what's great about you is you don't lie. It's it's it, there's just no bullshit, and it's such a breath of fresh air in a world full of bullshit. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, yeah, Aid, should, should maybe I, I think I should lie a few times. Are you, you should maybe listen? I'm just being conscious. I'm just being conscious of the time here. Um, but I just want to say the way you guys work, Gary. You obviously come up with an idea, and then you send it up off to Aid. Aid, your process is you will either replace the sound or add something to it, and then you'll send it back to Gary. Is that um, how it works? Back and it, forth. Yeah. I guess so. Well, with the, so the, what I receive from Gary is a fully formed song. It's not yes. just, you know, it's not just a vocal, you know, a piano, and a, and a, you know, it's a fully formed yeah. song, you know, with, you know, and Gary's done all the vocal takes at home. Um, and so I receive, and especially now we both work on Logic, I receive a project from him with all the vocal takes I can comp them myself or he's comped them or whatever. Um, but, it, you know, and then I... We, we might have a chat about it or I can hear from what he sent me what what you know where this can go or sometimes he lets me choose a slightly different path and then that will go backwards and forwards a couple of times um and so it's really like building blocks really but all of the time I'm sending him versions of things that and he's already done is, yes is this okay or what, what yeah. you know what do you think about this direction um you know sometimes it, it just happens straight away sometimes it it doesn't happen straight away, you know, uh, here in the black being the perfect example of where it doesn't work straight away. Um, and that goes not just the, the chorus that Gary loved, then hated, then loved, then hated, and all the rest of it. Oh, that was also with musically as well. Here in the black started off as a completely different song, the, the version that appeared on Splinter, you know, mm. completely different. Yeah, th we should take that out. We, 37. We should, 37. We should take <laughs> the first version out because it's so different. Anyway. So, but I always start with the vocals and uh, get the vocals edited, get them all, um, all in time and all the rest of it. Um, and then I start building the drum track and then um, everything else comes. And the I, do, I tell you, it, it's so much more than what he's saying. If you could hear the demos that I send him, they are quite developed, mm -hmm. but they are so crude and basic. Mm -hmm. If you to listen to that, as a, that's what he gets. As a, it's like being given a lump of mud. Okay. <laughs> and turning it into this marble statue. You know what I mean? Well, it, yes, it, it, becoming like Forrest Gump now as well, is it? He's yeah. off. <laughs> We're a pair of forests, mate. <laughs> but honestly, man, he t he turns that crude little sort of block of an idea and shapes it into something fucking magical. And I lean on him massively. Well, you know, you know, gentlemen, if it's not broken, don't fix it. And, and that is why I think this is AIDS' fifth album. And I'm looking forward to hearing that you're going to be doing Intruder 2. But let's not jump the gun for now. I just want to get some promotional stuff uh, here, Gary. Um, you have just announced a tour in 2022. I saw that come up last night. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, we do. It's the first British tour that we've been able to do since the, the COVID thing happened. And will therefore be the first British tour that we do for Intruder. Um, there is a, There was a plan to, to get the second, because Intruder is actually a staggered double album. There will be a second one. Yeah. Um, the, the idea was to get it out in time for that tour starting that's looking a little bit unlikely i think really, because we need to have it done by december well, well yeah i mean 
Yeah. So there, you, there'll you probably be a second British tour in November towards the end, uh, sorry, in 2022, towards the end of it. Uh, and that will help with the second album. Okay. I just want to also say to the guys watching, there is a live stream event on the 17th of June. Uh, if you go to, uh, I will put link, everything will be tagged in, in the description box below. All the links will be there. Uh, it's a live stream called Intruder, a worldwide concert premiere. I've already bought my ticket. And um, Gary, that's going to be the first live performance of your album? Yeah. Yeah. We're not doing the entire album. It's, it's a conventional show. I think seven or eight songs on the album. And, you know, just a lot, lots from Savage and you know, <laughs> Cars, probably. <laughs> <laughs> That sort of stuff. Anyway. So it's kind of like a, a, what I would do for a, a live set should we be going out on tour where you're you're really hitting a new album, but it's not just not just a new album. I just want to say one thing because I am aware of the time here. Um, when I was walking out of the uh, Royal Albert Hall gig, which was one of those gigs where the the standard had been reached so high, it's just like wow, that was like your your moment. But I promise you, not when we walked out, you know, there's like this chatter. I did hear someone behind me saying, he didn't play cars, I promise you. <laughs> and I just thought, who the fuck said that? You know, it's, <laughs> you can't please everyone. No, no. Listen, Gary Aid, this has been an absolute dream come true for the channel. Um, listen, Gary, I know when you come to the UK, you're always very, very busy. So, um, I, you know, I won't assume anything, but hopefully maybe next year or something, I could come to LA and interview you in person for a little mini series if that's okay with you or we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll talk we'll talk about that there's a lot of things um because th yeah just really really excited about this thank you so much so um anything you want to say before we say goodbye <laughs> buy the album <laughs> buy the album yes intruder is out on the 21st of may links in the description below it is available digitally on cassette and is on vinyl i think it's gold Platinum and black vinyl, is that right? Yeah, and a picture disc. And a picture oh, disc. Slam many formats. But... <laughs> and, ca and cassette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says we're not nostalgic. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and of course, yeah, says he who's not nostalgic. And of course, guys, he has the book Revolution Evolution. Links in the description below. Gary Aid, thank you so much for your time. I look forward to interviewing you in person. Oh, yes, and Aid, I'm at your studio on the 7th of June. So we'll see you there. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, Cheers man. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, guys. Bye bye. Yeah.